Good morning and welcome to the first introductory lecture for year 12 and 13 which I used to give to students and this has to do with the language acquisition and uh, English as a language and this is because we are all non-native speakers, most of us in Fiji and the Pacific and therefore we have certain issues regarding how we deal with English. In fact, the very structure of uh, education in uh, English education in our schools is uh, it's structured in such a way that you know we like to think of English as a subject, right from the periods and the class organizations and the exercises and all that we do, even the how we are taught. It all amounts to how we view English. English is not just a subject. It's a language. And as you can see here, for any language, the four basic skills are listen, speak, read, and write. And uh, pardon the crude drawings, but that's supposed to be the ear linked to listening. Tongue, I put the tongue out. In the original uh, textbook which we had in the primary schools, the tongue was missing. Only the lips were there. Now, I was trying to stress the importance of the tongue because without the tongue, we won't be able to speak. And then, of course, my iteration of what a book is, the strength of reading and writing. And why pencil? Because pencil was, if you all remember, the first uh, tool or instrument that we used to start writing before we went to bed in primary schools. Anyway, uh, why these four skills are important, as I say, and why I call this the basic is because these skills occur in steps and stages in a human development. For instance, there's a records of we being able to hear even while we are in the womb. So therefore I've put zero to two and three, two to three years plus. You see the plus plus which keeps on going. It doesn't stop as in all of those and his other skills that we have. So we start learning or hearing words we don't know the meaning, we don't associate them with any sort of meaning, but we know those words are there. And that's why we, we develop from zero to, as I say, two to three years. And then speaking, as you can see, comes in the next stage. When in about roughly three to four years, we start learning how to speak. In fact, if you watch the babies uh, being uh, bathed and, uh, you know, put out by their mother, getting tired and dressed up by their mother, you'll find that the mother will keep on talking to them. And the baby will keep on recording those messages, those sounds, and then will make sense. When we flip over, you will be able to understand how that works. Those two go together, that develops first, then we learn how to speak, and then of course by the ages of four and five years, we start learning how to read and then write at the same time. Those two, remember, read and write, come out of, come normally by the same time, at the same stage. And uh, for that, we start off with the code of the English alphabet, which is the English, of the English language, sorry, which is the English alphabet, A, B, C, D. And then writing, we started off with writing in pencil in those thick uh, lined uh, exercise books in primary school. Now, if you will allow me to flip back and I tell you how we, how my understand, we acquire English language. In my, in my iteration of the Listen, Speak, Read and Write lecture, I have also added addition of sense of sight in language acquisition. I already said that we start learning, we start listening when we are, we are able to we are able to hear sounds, but we are not able to see. So if this part of the brain, assume this part of the brain is concerned with language acquisition, then the sounds, because we are only hearing, will be ingrained as just simple blips scattered all over. And the more you sound, the more of the same sound, for example, your mother's sound you hear most or your father sound you hear most, so then they'll start blipping on the same one, making stronger impressions. Your father's sound you keep hearing will make stronger impressions there. 
The dog barking outside, you might not even know it's a dog because you're in a mother's womb, but that's also one sound. The birds chirping, everything makes a sound. Now, when we are born, and then we start seeing things, then the mind, if you want, the same portion, starts organizing those sounds and associating meaning with them. So, all those ones with the mother's sound will be there. Okay, that's mom. That's dad. See, from the word, the voice to the object, or the person, in this case. And then, so, together from there, hearing with sight, we start identifying things, pets, food, whatever. And then, when we go on to primary school, or before that, we learn the alphabet, which is the code of the English language, as we say. Therefore, you all remember A for apple, B for ball, and C for cat, and whatever. Now, that is encoding the language. Another interesting thing before that, we talk about uh, the first uh, words, that is uh, speaking about two to three years old. Now, there's a funny anecdote I have there. Uh, of the, because of the, in some, so much repetition, the words ma or pa are probably at the top of the list because everybody's been using that so much. So the mother, and if you notice babies uh, at that age, getting dressed and getting ready by their, readied by their mother, and then the mother will continuously be talking to her, ba, ba, mama, mama, and the baby will be therefore trying its best. You will notice the tongues, you can see the tongue was in prominence on the other side, will always try to make that sound, to vocalize. And so one day the mother is happily throwing the baby, tossing the baby up and saying, Mama, Mama, and all of a sudden everything goes right and the baby says, Ma. And in amazement, my mother lets the baby go. <laughs> anyway, that is just a funny way of saying that. But that's how the first words begin. And remember, when the first, when we start saying the first words, all the others come very, very rapidly. So it's a very good stage, fast stage of development at that time. And then, by the time we go to class one and learn the alphabets and start writing, between that age to when we go to year four, year five, where we have mastered the skills, the basic skills of listen, speak, read, and write, and are able to make, construct, make sense of our environment and communicate. Because after all, the whole objective of a learning language is to help in communication. So there, year four, year five, we, are, we have learned to master the basics of the language. English, as I say, or your mother tongue. Then, if you remember, this is something that is supplemented that I want to discuss. Then we were taught how to write in cursive. These days nobody even, nobody writes cursive, nobody has, you know, because people don't write in cursive, they are not able to even read cursive. So please pardon if you cannot understand the depths. Then we will learn how to write, taught how to write cursive. And why we were taught how to write in cursive was because our minds were able to process the information that we saw and associate it with the object and make reasonable sentences. And so our mind was developing at a faster rate, reacting with the stimulus that we received. Therefore, writing came in, it was supposed to be hand-eye coordination. But somehow, when we're supposed to be learning how to write faster, that was the main thing, main reason we were taught how to write faster, so that we were able to process, we would be able to process larger blocks of tons of information and transcribe or write more about it. So how fast we were able to read and how fast we were able to write, there's a direct correlation. We are able to read a lot, eight or nine words in a, lot, in a line at once, but when we are printing, we are slowing down that process. So that was my take on why cursive was taught and why it should have continued, but it hasn't. Because if you look at it cumulatively, ever since we have stopped writing in cursive, we have actually been responsible for slowing down our own mental activities. And that is why I said, my measurement of IQ or is increased or higher mental activity. And the listen, skills, listen speak, read and write skills help this indefinitely. I'll come back to this focus word game. Let's go back to the original, original uh, slide. 
So, as we were saying, as I was trying to explain how language of accusation actually takes place and how the skills develop over the years and then reading and writing. What I am leading to, or what all this leads to is the literacy issues that we, literacy issues that we have in our country now. There are students who are not able to write essays, uh, answers properly. There are students, there are still non-readers, not only in uh, lower years or forms, but even in year 13 in most, in quite a lot of secondary schools. We have non-readers, we have non-writers, Spelling is a major problem, it's a national problem, I would say, international too. Everywhere you come up with people who can't spell things properly. The other, just yesterday I saw inside of a commercial van, uh, some enterprise, and the, pri and the price was spelled with a C. And of course, the major problem we have is skipping. I'll talk about that in a moment. Pronunciation, people have a lot of pronunciation problems. There are some uh, renowned uh, announcers I can name who have so those problems who we'll forget about other people. Anyway, as I was saying, when we started reading, all of us remember the three little pigs and other stories that we had. You know, the ladybird books with the pictures, full page picture, and then explanations and, and the story. Three Little Pigs, uh, Little Red Hand, Little Red Riding Hood. My personal favorite is The Beauty and the Beast. But anyway, but when, when we did read that, that, read that, that was probably year four, class four, or class three, in some people's cases. And as we went on to year five, year six, year seven, more difficult vocabulary were added which we were supposed to write down and, uh, you know, write the meanings from the dictionary to increase our vocabulary. However, we stopped around year six, year seven, because we learned, as I said, skipping. I dare say, if, we, if skipping was an Olympic, sp Olympic sport, Fiji would have won gold before the sevens. Because that's what it is, people start getting new words, in year six, year seven, you have one or two page of words in a page which we skip, don't find the meaning of, we just keep on skimming and reading and pretend we know. In year nine, the same by a student will encounter five or six per words per page, if they read at all. And therefore that continues to snowball where you come to year 12 or year 13 and give the, given a comprehension passage from the past year's external exam, you have students who are read, struggling to read with their fingers over the page. More than half or three quarter of the whole comprehension passage, they do not understand. So how do you expect them to answer? And I'm only talking about the comprehension. Forget about the writing, we'll come back to that. Anyway, as I was saying, how we can uh, improve on these? That's the crux of what this uh, talk is about. Listening skills, we need to develop listening skills from a very young age. And how we, how we can help, especially in this lockdown and uh, difficult uh, crisis and uh, times you're going through, we resort to radio more. In fact, we had radio right there when we were kids and we used to listen to songs. As I said, songs, English or Hindi, are a very good way of trying to improve your listening skills and writing them. Like, uh, uh, the, how many of you remember having song, uh, song books where you listen to songs and you write the lyrics down and then you have deliver, transfer them into another song book and of course sing them. That also ties in with your speaking and other skills. Then you have films. Quite a lot of, uh, all of us know movies and TV, as you can say, TV there, movies. We all watch. But, and a lot of us remember memorable dialogues of movies. And we mimic actors. I mean, who doesn't know Arnold Schwarzenegger's I'll be back? And so many more. So that should be, can be tapped. Because that can develop into other skills later on, like role playing and you know, acting skills. Second comes speaking. We need to develop our vocabulary. And for that, a vocabulary book is essential. The use of dictionaries is essential. Speech, people need to speak in English. That's why oratory contests are important. That's why morning talks are important. That's why oral presentations are important. 
and then of course I said mimicry. I don't know how many uh, students do mimicry in classes in their in their oral presentations over there, or whether they are even given any opportunity to do that these days. Reading is another one. As I said, those uh, small books, the ones we read during our childhood, most of us will remember. But after that, we grow, we started to you know, natural phenomena. We think that we know everything and we stop reading. Most of us, and that. We have to start from reading basics to bigger novels. There are still students who don't read enough. And that is the major problem why we have so many literacy, literacy problems in our country. Not only in our country, others as well. Writing. We started with uh, picture compositions when we were in primary school. We were given uh, comic strip kind of things and we are supposed to answer, write stories on them. We used to write picture compositions when we were in primary school and then uh, stories, creative uh, story, uh, writing. I don't know how many of us were able to write good stories, but that should have been developed, but somehow we fell out. That can be, my remedy for that is this 10 lines per day writing exercise, which I will uh, dwell, about in the, dwell on in the next bit here. How we can address, listen, speak, read and write writing issues is very simple. As I said, this is an introductory class and I wanted uh, one of my students to take note of what I am trying to say and see whether this helps them or not. It is a guaranteed uh, recipe and you only need to do this uh, 10 lines per day writing exercise for 3 to 4 weeks and you will be able to see the benefits yourselves. Part 1, as I say, is writing. All you need to do is get an old exercise book. You do not need to buy a new exercise book. I prefer the old 80 pages uh, book, which have 20 lines. Most 80 pages exercise books have 20 lines per page. Lecture pads have 30 lines per page. So why 10 lines? Because you only need to do 10 lines of writing in your uh, best handwriting. Even for younger children, the parents or their teachers or their mentors can write 10 lines per day or just 10 lines per day, 10 lines on half the page and the child can repeat the same exercise every day. How long does it take you? Roughly 5 to 7 minutes to write 10 lines. Okay. So what do you do? Start the time and stop time. Okay. You need to transcribe from a book or novel or whatever, or newspaper even, or any magazine even. If you are reading, just grab that. The many, most uh, students in our schools have uh, religious books as well. So anything. All you need to do is take 10 minutes or 7 minutes of your time out. Transcribe. That's what we call it. Transcribing. You read from a book and you write in your best handwriting 10 of that. You write when before you start, you write down the time you start, 6 p.m. And then you just write as you can. Develop some pride in our writing. That's another thing I would like to add here. Without passion and pride in your writing, because you must remember how, how important writing is. Your writing is your identity. It is your signature. It shows what sort of a person you are. I don't know how many people dwell on all that right now, but that's how I believe. That's what I believe, and I know many students can also learn to believe that. Because once you have pride in what you write, how you write, then that leads on to bigger things. So you start off 6 p.m. Start time. Write 10 lines. Stop. You come across any difficult word or new word, leave it for the time being. Finish your 10 lines, stop. Write down your time, you stop. Then, you count the number of words you have written. Say, in half a page, 80 to 90 words. Then, you minus your stop time and your start time, so roughly you get 5 minutes. If it took you five minutes to write 80 to 90 words, you divide that and you will get your W 
RPM, which is words per minute. Words per minute, and that is your reading time, writing time, and reading time. Speed. Okay. Your WPM is the rate at which you read and write. Because remember, there will be some some of us who will read three or four words at a time and write. There will be some who will be able to read six words at one time and write. There are some of us who will be able to read three words, but then they'll have to look two, three times to get the right words down. That's how slow some some of us are. This is a very easy five minute remedy, five to six minute remedy on improving your word per minute and your right reading speed and your writing speed. Just do ten lines, roll, stop there, go. Do whatever else you want in your other subjects or whatever. Next day, try to get in a habit. It's this, this is also one of those things which uh, teaches you how to discipline yourself to actually do 10 minutes or 5 minutes of this writing exercise. It can also build up discipline later on for conditioning your body and mind for greater studies later on when you go to tertiary studies or secondary, upper, secondary, higher school. So next day you do the same thing, don't write the same thing, read some more and try to write another 10 lines this time, making sure that this, what you write here, is neater and faster. So you compare your writing speed here. And you can have your own record, WPM, WPM there. Do this for, as I said, only three to four weeks. At the end of three to four weeks, you'll have 28 divided by two, 14 pages of your own writing, which you will be able to assess and say, aha, that's how bad or good my writing was then. This is how good or how much improvement I have made over this time. This was my writing and uh, writing speed then. This is my writing speed now. It's an excellent way because once you start from a small half page exercise, that is supposed to radiate to your other subjects and everything else that you do. You will be more aware of what you are, what are, are what's around you in terms of English i.e. posters, advertisements and all that. Of course, it's a state of mind as well, developing that. As I said, when you're writing, you'll come across some words which are uh, new to you. So because we have been skipping a lot, let's cut it out. Develop this skill now. When you're writing, you come across a difficult word, come back to it after you have written and done the worked out your WPM, work, uh, words per minute, your speed, and then, Go to the back of your, on, behind this uh, exercise book, at the back page, that's your vocabulary book. Any new word you come across, you write down there, find the meaning from the dictionary. And I have students who have in the first three weeks of uh, year 11 in Dudley, who have now got about five pages of vocabulary and 22 pages of writing. That was before we broke off. So they have already started off. I hope they carry on. They will. Now, why is all this so important? Why is it so important to build your reading speed and your writing speed? Because at the end of the year, all of us in year 12 and 13 will be doing external exams. Year 11s and others, all, ex all, ex all forms will be examined. They will be having exams. Of course, these will be external exams for year 12. And for instance, Year, 11, year 12 has 55% just for writing. First question, formal writing, 10 marks. Question 2, personal writing, 10 marks. Somebody in uh, question 4, I believe, yes, that's question 4. Somebody writing, 5 marks. And then you have 15, 15 marks for literature, 2 essays. So add it all up, 55%. Now that's why we, we, have to, we also have students who do not leave all those questions empty in their answer sheets. So a student not attempting 55%, what will they, that clearly shows they lack reading and writing skills, and also means that for comprehension, 
as you talked earlier, they have been skipping, they don't know words, so they won't be able to answer. How can they pass? Forget about getting 80, 90 and being a topper. Anyway, coming around to the solution that I have proposed, 10 lines per day, plus of course you need a dictionary, that's vital for your vocabulary. Transcribe, write uh, 10 lines per day, leave it, develop that, share with your friends and your relatives in these times, you have younger siblings, you can have a competition, try it out, try and see how long it takes for who's the best, to get the who's the best, uh, best writer in the family, who's the fastest reader. That's a fun way to spend with family, I think. Vocabulary book, try and see. Don't only leave the vocabulary items there. Learn new words, use them in your vocabulary. Try to have a competition who can talk the best in English or Hindi or whatever your language is. But of course the focus here is for English, so that's what it is. And uh, for the benefit of uh, people who have uh, problems with the letter shapes, I have a sentence here. The quick red fox jumps over the lazy brown dog. That sentence contains all the 26 letters of the English alphabet. And as I as mentioned earlier, that is the alphabet is the code for English language. Eh? So you can write that. That's also for the benefit of others who don't want to read or can't read and don't uh, like cursive or can't write in cursive. It's also there in print. The same sentence, the quick red fox jumps over the lazy brown dog. Try it out, see whether it benefits you or not. My guarantee, it will. As I said, this was my introductory class on uh, language acquisition and the, sense and the realization of how we actually develop language skills and how they can help us not only communicate better, but develop into more disciplined and better prepared for our exams. In our next classes, the other teachers in the department I'm, and I myself will cover other aspects of literature and language to help you with your worksheets and syllabus. Last parting uh, quiz. How many of you are able to identify what I'm using as a pointer? If you've been able to guess, yes. It is a guava stick, one which we used, which our generation would remember, teachers used to, you know, instruct us to learn. Many of us used to get dusters on our hands for not able to write properly. Of course, that's another era. And uh, that uh, basically rounds up my first uh, introductory class, again, going recapping. We all are non-native speakers and we need to develop our skills in uh, communication and language. The four skills, listen, speak, read and write. And that continues, as I said, in, in, indefinitely till we die probably or make some other major mental ailment. The steps of those skills and how they are so important. The literacy issues which we have, pronunciation, non-writers, spelling, spelling is another major problem, the vocabulary helps there. And we've talked about the other major mo modes available to us, social media, try to get out of that, you know, watch meaningful TV stations. Yeah, in fact, there are so many words uh, which uh, I used to pronounce wrongly earlier. And by watching some programs on National uh, Geography and others, I was able to correct my errors. And of course, speech, being able to talk properly so that you are more confident in communicating what you're trying to say. Reading, uh, nobody does much. I, I don't, we don't see many people reading. Let us develop a more vibrant reading and writing culture. And these are the basic steps. I uh, hope this helps you. Please do try to take it on board. Thank you.